So thank you. Thanks for joining us here. And thank you, Musa Isak and Orly Yadin, for joining us today. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the Burlington Bethlehem Arad Sister City program. And um, maybe just introduce yourselves, Musa. Uh, my name is uh, Musa Ishaq. I'm a uh, Palestinian American. I uh, have lived in Vermont for 46 years, so we are Vermonters by choice. And uh, we love it here, and we love the people, and uh, good friend, Orly, more in the last few years. And uh, we go on. Yeah. Uh, and I'm Orly Adin, and I've been in Vermont for 23 years. Is it already? Yes, 23 years. I came here from London, England where I lived most of my life, but I was born in Israel. Right. And tell me a little bit, how did the Burlington Sister City originate? You're one of the founders, right? right. Is that correct? Yeah. So it started with Ras Payne, the late, late Ras Payne. It was really her idea. And it was a group of friends, Sister Miriam Ward, you know, who passed, unfortunately, beautiful soul, and uh, Sandy Beard and myself. Mm -hmm. And Chris was involved, you know, behind yeah. the scenes. and. Uh, Raz is the one who really drove us. She said there are hundreds of American city, sister cities with Israeli sister cities. Why don't we have not one Palestinian city, sister city with uh, an American city? And we started working on that. We said, that's a great idea. So we looked for, so those are the founders, Raz Payne, Sandy Beard, Sister Miriam, and myself. <clears throat> and we started looking for a Palestinian city and uh, Bethlehem, not because of religious uh, connotations or any of that, it's because it's the, we chose Bethlehem because it's the same size as Burlington. Uh, it's a university town and it is an uh, artistic town. You know, they have lots of artistry going on, especially woodworking, and, and that's why we chose it. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, it was very contentious, it was not an easy thing. Uh, many people said, you know, the suspicion was, why did you choose Bethlehem? And, you know, you can choose, to be honest, you can choose any city in the world. Say, we want to be a sister city. It's not going to be an issue. The moment you say Palestinian sister city, it's an issue. And this is across the country. Mm -hmm. So we get uh, calls from across the country consulting with us. We still do. Uh, how do you make it work? Because many try and it fails. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, one, you have to have good progressive people really on your side, especially progressive Jews, on your side working hard on this issue. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So that's what made it work here is Raz Payne and company. You know, I give him major uh, uh, credit. And uh, Mayor Clavel was awesome. You know, in the beginning, he was listened and uh, city council. And it was not easy. You know, it was lots of opposition in the beginning. But uh, we... Uh, created a task force and we said okay what's the compromise and I believe in compromise always and the compromise was instead of canceling the sister city or killing it with Bethlehem uh, they said what about an Isra somebody said what about an Israeli city also and that's how we came a friend of ours uh, uh, B. Bookchin said I know somebody in Arad and uh, she got in touch and we ended up with a tripartite so our sister city with Palestinian city, Bethlehem, was the first in the country. And also, we were the number one, the first uh, in the country with the tripartite uh, relationship. Yeah. And, have, and so, Orly, how did you come to be involved in the sister city? Uh, well, when I came here to Vermont, to Burlington, uh, I think I have to mention, again, Roz Payne, because I got to know Roz Payne. She was one of the first people I met. Mm -hmm. And she was saying, oh, you have to join the sister city, you know. <laughs> we don't have any Israelis there or something like that. So I came to a few meetings and um, seemed to have stayed. Yes. Because I, like, I like the people. And we love and it. And the mission. We, we love it. Yeah. We are and very happy. Well, t tell me what is the mission then? People to people. I mean, Musa, you can correct me as, no, as go a ahead, veteran. Please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I feel as if I'm a veteran by now. Yeah. It's basically, it's supposedly not a political connection, although everything is politics these days, but it's really people to people with the belief that if you get to meet the people, then 
many of your ingrained prejudices or animosity or whatever preconceived ideas will fall apart because you see people as human beings and we're all human beings. Mm -hmm. And how is that? What's what's? Have you all been to the sisters? Have you visited Arad or Betham? I have not, but yeah. Mayor Clevel, I give him credit. Yeah. He took a delegation, including yeah. Raz and Sister Sandy Beard and several others, yeah. went with him to both Bethlehem and to Arad. Yeah, and I, I've been to both, but not in the context yeah. of Sister right. City. Yeah. And to be clear, and I think we have a map. I don't have the TV is not on right now, but we do have a map um, that we can look at that shows where these cities are. Arad is um, sort of off on the... In the Arad is south of Bethlehem. Yeah. It's south of Bethlehem on the east side of Israel overlooking the Dead Sea. Yeah. And Bethlehem is very, very close to Jerusalem, just south of it. Yeah. I mean, like five yeah. miles. 15 yeah. minute drive. Yeah. And tell us, like, what's the relationship? I mean, we have a situation that's going on. How has the, you know, the sister city, how has your involvement in the sister city affected your understanding of this current situation? You know, from the beginning, yeah. we set out with the idea that we cannot force the sister cities to be to work together yeah we would love it we suggested it but uh, we left it up to them they have their own political situations so we we left it to both Arad and Bethlehem but because of the politics it's it is very difficult so there hasn't been a lot of no. Meeting or cross pollination. The only meeting was when the mayor of uh, Mayor Tabib uh, of uh, Arad came to Burlington with the representative of Mayor Fridge of Bethlehem. Yeah. Uh, uh, the journey is his last name. They met here and they signed the agreement with Mayor Clavel. Okay. And, and that, that was, was beautiful. And we had parties and we had dinners and. Yeah. So it was, yeah. you know what. Orly is saying is you break bread together and you become friends. And Mayor Tabib, we were really close to him and his administration. However, of Arad, however, after that became a lot more, uh, how I want to say it, a more conservative government, you know, after Tabib lost and became very difficult to. And then we had uh, Mayor Batars of Bethlehem visit Burlington and the next mayor, I forgot his name, of Arad visit, but he really was interested in business and we could not afford, we could not provide the business opportunities he wanted. Yeah. So it's been really difficult with the, with the, in the last 15 years or so to be in touch with Arad, even though we've made many attempts. Many. But the, the as Musa said, the municipality changed and it's an election by party. Yeah. And it was the Likud party who went in, whereas before it was the Labour Party yeah. mayor. Yeah. And they just um, not, rep not responding. Yeah. Um, Orly tried. Uh, Mayor Weinberger uh, sent a, we said, you know, should we send a letter of congratulations to the new mayor of Arad? He did, no, no answer. But again, we don't give up. Yeah. So it's still officially yeah. a sister city of ours and we will continue working on it. Yeah. And so how, I mean, and to be, you know, neither of these cities is, well, everything is near to what's going on in Gaza and right. Israel, but they're outside of that, the sort of direct conflict zone. How does it affect what you're seeing that's going on right now? So you you the, were saying in, the, in Bethlehem. In the West Bank, in Bethlehem, and my village, Abud, where I was born, is uh, totally under lockdown, you know, since the October 7th. And uh, m absolutely miserable situation. Like Bethlehem depends on tourism. Yeah, keep talking. I'm sorry, I'm gonna do that. Yeah. Bethlehem, you were saying Bethlehem. It depends, depends on depends tourism. 70% at least of yes. their income is really from tourism and hotels and and uh, none of that is there. And it's locked down yeah. too. So nobody in, nobody out. There's probably not food Correct. moving. and Like yeah. my village, you know, I'll just mention how it's constructed. If you go look at pictures of it, there is a gate at the front of the village. Yeah. They lock it down. You cannot go out. So what happens, you end up driving on dirt roads and they know they can you can get out, yeah. but it ends up ruining your cars, and there is a cost to it, yeah. and makes it more miserable living. You know, yeah. it's yeah. so life is not good on the West Bank. Yeah. And the the other thing that really concerns me is, especially with the current government, the it's giving green light to settlers f committing pogroms. You know, as many Israelis, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Hagai Matar, 
who is the executive director of uh, uh, Plus 972. It's a magazine uh, uh, published by journalists, Palestinians and uh, Israelis. And he says it's pogroms, you know, is what's going on and pogroms. Yeah. And uh, what uh, under the Israeli army. So we have to change that. You know, again, I'm not losing hope yet and I will not. Uh, we just have to work as Americans, as Israelis. There are many Israelis working on changing the situation. They are not in power. And uh, Americans, yeah. we have to also push our government to do the right thing. As somebody early as, you know, being born in Israel, I'm assuming, yep. and identifying as an Israeli, how does being involved in a sister city affect your um, perspectives, either how politically or Being personally? involved in the sister city? Yeah. Um, it doesn't affect my politics. I yeah. mean, they haven't changed in yeah. any way. Yeah. They just confirmed. I mean, the reason I still attend and I'm part of it is because it, it conforms to the way I view life. I mean, it, it's become harder and harder to think of people to people in, uh, when really all you want to do is just stop what's going on. Um, but you still have to remind yourself that if we no longer see people as human beings and just as enemies, and by enemies I don't mean like that the Palestinians are my enemies because I happen to, I meant the people I don't agree with yeah. are my enemies. You yeah. know, we criticize here in the US, you know, pe political people who we really maybe hate. Yeah. It's hard to think, remember that they're also human beings. Yeah. Um, but it's a, it's a very good exercise, I think, yeah. you know, so that we can stay human yeah. beings. Yeah. Can you, um, I, it's a hard subject to talk about because it gets um, contentious pretty quickly, but maybe just talk directly to the, like who, who are you seeing as the enemies that are being dehumanized and the... Um, the being de dehumanized? Yeah. The Palestinians are being yeah. de dehumanized, um, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. 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 Uh, dehumanization always uh, proceeds destroying somebody yeah. and Israel is really I'm talking about the establishment dehumanizing the Palestinians is worse than I've ever heard it before with this current government and his bandit of uh, <laughs> of right-wing people you know uh, Bezalel, uh, Smart, Smotrich, Smotrich and uh, ben, ben Gavir and these people are before it was a dog whistle about ethnic cleansing and pushing Palestinians out. Now it's foghorn. You know yeah. they are saying yeah. it right in the open. Let's push them out. And so it's it's hard. You know, as Orly says. I think one of the the problem is that in the last fifty years, after 1967, the so-called Six Day War, where Israel conquered the West Bank and Gaza and bits of the Golan Heights, but, um, but mainly the main populations were in the West Bank and Gaza, um, created a major shift in Israeli politics, mainly in how people, because suddenly, for the first time, more or less, there was a voice to um, fundamentalists. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Jewish fundamentalists. Um, there are also Muslim fundamentalists, but I'm just talking about the, for the first time, suddenly that whole um, biblical narrative, if you like, of, you know, I give you this land from, from the sea to the, the, from north to south uh, and so on. Um, that was never a discussion between 1940, or even before, but say 1948 when the State of Israel was declared and 1967 and that war. There was never a discussion, you know, um, but after that, suddenly religion reared its voice um, and um, really suddenly going back to the Bible as if it was, this is what we have to do, this is what God, God called us to do. Hence, you know, all the, and it became only, this is 50 years ago, almost 1967. Mm -hmm. So it happened gradually. You know, and the first few voices were just a minority and we thought of them as the lunatic fringe. Mm. But gradually, this is what happens. I mean, yeah. Nazi Germany um, 
just as another example, I'm not saying no situation is identical, yeah. but in the, Hitler, you know, first reared his head in 1923. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people thought, oh, he was a lunatic. Yeah, they didn't take him yeah. seriously. Yeah. But some people already saw it yeah. and so and until it happened. So yeah. these things grow and if one doesn't nip them in the bud, they become uncontrollable and yeah. they take over. Yeah, Expo exposure, exposed to the light. Do you, um, right now in Burlington, we've had a couple of contentious city council meetings. There were folks that just tried to put a ballot item on the referendum, I mean, a referendum on the ballot um, condemning Israel as a genocide um, state. Right. I'm wondering how your involvement in the sister city or does the sister city weigh in on that conversation in some way? No, we had our own struggle. So I'll, I'll tell you, the first, the first uh, proposal was to ask for ceasefire yes. you know, by our city council. Yep. And I'm really disappointed. And did that come from the sister city or did no, that no? No, no, from yeah. Jewish Voice for Peace yeah. and VTJP. And yeah. so I'm really disappointed in our city council that they rejected to just ask for ceasefire. And to me, ceasefire is not a political thing in you know, a political statement. It's stop the killing of children yeah. and women and men. And 23,000, and now it's 26,000 have, have been killed. And uh, just to give you, an idea of the scale, Putin's disastrous uh, war on Ukraine has produced 10,000 uh, killed civilians in two years yeah. or three years almost. Oh. Israel produced 26,000 in no time, 10,000 kids beyond now, yeah. unfortunately. And now disease and uh, so the destruction is, is unbelievable, you know, of what's happening in Gaza. and. Uh, so I'm, I'm disappointed in our city council not approving the genocide call more than the second one because here Minneapolis just approved a call ceasefire, for, ceasefire yeah. call for ceasefire yeah. and uh, Somerville in Massachusetts. We should have been number one yeah. in calling. You know, whether it changes anything or not, but symboli symbolically, Burlington is always in the forefront of these good issues. We should have approved the call for ceasefire. So as you already alluded to early, this conflict obviously goes back and gets tangled pretty quickly in sort of religious fundamentalism. On both politics. sides. I yeah. would say Hamas are also religious fundamentalists yeah. and they're also, uh, they cl cl say, they state, you know, that they want to eliminate Hamas, Hezbollah, Daesh, uh, ISIS. Uh, yeah. Um, so where, what, what is your understanding of where the term, how the term ceasefire became politicized in that way? Because I did yeah, watch I'm, that debate and you go like, yeah, kind of scratch your head as somebody I'm who's totally separate surprised. from, yeah. I'm totally surprised. Yeah. I mean, you ask for a ceasefire to stop killing civilians. Yeah. And then if you want to go after Hamas or after the military, do it somehow. But don't mm -hmm. destroy what really concerns me about Gaza. I'm seeing the massive indiscriminate bombing you know, I think it was like 30,000 air raids on Gaza. You know, to put it in context, Gaza is 30 miles from here to the size of it, from here to Montpelier. Yeah. Five miles wide, most of it, eight miles at the widest. Two million people are stuffed in it, and they are from southern Israel. You know, what was southern Palestine, they were ethnically cleansed into that area. And uh, now they are being... Uh, according to Israelis and according to secret uh, memos that got leaked, it, they really their uh, plan is to push them into Sinai, build tent cities, and then build cities, you know, to accommodate them there. And I hope it does not work because that would be ethnically cleansing big time. Yeah. And uh, that's what I call it. Yeah. And they are saying it in the open, you know, yeah. many, many Israeli politicians, unfortunately. Yeah. So did you watch the conversation at the city council? Yes. No. Did you have some? I did. Yeah. I did. Unfortunately, because of health reasons, I could not be yeah. there. But uh, the biggest disappointment was not approving the call for ceasefire. Yeah. There was nothing attached to it, just ceasefire, call for ceasefire, and they could not uh, come up with it. And now we should be ashamed because uh, Minneapolis have approved it, you know, much bigger city. 
and uh, I don't know if the current mayor is still of Minneapolis because I know she was a friend of Mayor uh, Weinberger. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she's still the mayor, but uh, I'll have to check on that. Yeah. And uh, Somerville in Massachusetts and I think others are coming. Yeah. But we should have been number one on ceasefire. You know, there was nothing attached to it. Well, it did become, I mean, there was a quick, there was a narrative that turned pretty quickly around that that right. had to do with a couple of things. One, a lack on the left of condemning the acts of Hamas right. at the beginning. And so there's a sort of a story there that's told that is, you know, there wasn't a quick enough condemnation of what Hamas was doing. And then into this idea that if you're calling for a ceasefire, you're basically supporting the continued um, war of Hamas. Right. And so, I, again, like, where is that? Who's generating that, I, that story so that we can't, that we have to hide behind words like this is too complicated right. to talk it's not, about? It's not complicated. Orly, do you have thoughts on that? It shouldn't be complicated. Right. I agree with Musa shouldn't that it be. shouldn't be complicated, yeah. Yeah. but it is because nothing is nothing is that simple. Yeah. And I think there was a huge fear. I mean, one example. I'm not saying it's the you know there was there is seems to be a huge fear here amongst um, uh, Jewish people, a fear of anti-Semitism, and the fact that no one. Uh, raise the voice after the Hamas um, killings and taking captives and whatever yeah. they did. Um, but then suddenly, the moment Israel attacked, um, suddenly there was condemnation. So the call for ceasefire was perceived as we are only criticizing one side and yeah. not the other because yeah. a ceasefire was seen as something that would be to Hamas's advantage and not to Israel's, except. Of course, that's stupid because they got some captives out. But I'm just saying, I'm not saying that I agree, but I'm trying to understand where it's all coming from. Yeah. There is a genuine fear. The fear is either, you know, justified or not, depending. I mean, th there's racism. Uh, we know racism exists. There's anti-Semitism and race. It exists, but that doesn't mean to say that anyone who criticizes what Israel does is by by definition anti-semitic. Mm -hmm. It's partly Israel's fault this conflation of anti-semitism and anti-Israel because it, when Israel set itself set itself up as a state, a Jewish state, it claimed uh, to represent Gorgeous. Jews all around the world and by forming that connection it could then say, oh, well, if you're criticizing Israel, you're criticizing all Jews. Yeah. And that's but true. the fear is genuine here. Yeah. It's, and it's very difficult to argue against fear because it comes from a feeling inside that's inbred yeah. in you and no logic will, yeah. yeah. And there is anti-Semitism, there's yeah. no doubt, but that has nothing to do with what Israel is doing and the West, uh, well, the West Bank Both. as well, and the mass bombings of Gaza. So. You know, to me, the people-to-people -people relationship in Burlington has about six different sister cities around the world. And um, the people-to-people -people relationship seems like the place that you would start. Absolutely. You know, Musa and I are closer in many ways than some of my best American friends. We eat the same food. And we like the same <laughs> food. And, you know, people-to-people -people is also eating together. Yeah. There's no better way That's to... Sweet to breaking break bread. everything by breaking bread together. Mm -hmm. And we know, we, I know his village. I may have never been there specifically, but I, you know, he knows um, there's, there's an understanding there um, that yeah. could not come with somebody who's never been there or lived there for a while anyway. Yeah, yeah. And is there, is this, have you seen interest in the sister city rise as this conflict Yeah, becomes? you know, it's slow, uh, but, uh, for sure, it's, it goes on. Now we have a couple of people, a new teacher, you know, from Essex Junction who really wants to do things. Uh, yeah. And uh, we have a new uh, woman who is the one who asked for uh, Brave Little State program yeah. to, to do something about right. the sister city. So she's going to come and join us. Oh, fabulous. So, fabulous. you know, it's slowly but surely, you know, we, we need more. 
everybody is welcome. Yeah, so if folks want to get involved, and it's the red camera in the middle there, if folks do want to get involved in the Sister Absolutely. City, how would they tell them how to get involved? We will tell you, we meet uh, first Monday of the month at uh, the Miller Center, okay. which is the new close North by, yeah. in North, yeah. At six o'clock. At six o'clock. So anytime but check because something like we had the cu last couple of meetings canceled but february one uh, the february one is on yeah so anybody is welcome yeah because it seems that there is you know if there's 1600 people that signed a petition to get a question on the ballot there right. are people that are interested in this issue locally yes and, yep. um, and do you think this is a good way for them to connect? You know, absolutely. I, I really believe otherwise, I'll tell you, the disappointing part is, oh, we haven't produced peace, you know, by being a sister city. But we cannot give up on, on that objective. We, we, you just have to keep working on it. Because if we had the illusion from day one that this is going to go smoothly or... Uh, resolve in peace, we would have been disappointed a long time ago. So the moral of the story is we just have to keep working on it. Yeah. And uh, I really believe it takes, you know, like happened, what happened in South Africa, it took a lot of pressure also from outside, you know, good friends to say, you've got to transform, you know, from an apartheid state to, to a state for everybody. And Israel is, here is my belief, the Israelis and the Palestinians, their destiny is intertwined and there is no way they can get rid of each other. So the best way is to really stop this apartheid system that they are entangled with, mm -hmm. where one, one group has all the rights and the other group has zero. Like, you know, the occupied territories, five million people between Gaza and uh, the West Bank, they have no, no rights whatsoever. And uh, the Palestinians in, uh, in Israel, who are citizens, have not exactly equal rights to, because it's by nationality. Anyway, that's a long discussion. So the, the best way is to, like as Haggai Matar says, there never was a military solution to this. The solution that always has been there in front of us is by getting rid of the occupation, the apartheid system, and the siege of Gaza, and live as equals. And I agree, he really said it, you know, I was reading, I have the statement here. I said, this is exactly what I believe. And I cannot, I will not deviate from it. I believe there is a good future for both Israelis and Palestinians. We just have to produce it with the help of friends from outside. So we are looking for transformation, not eliminating anybody or any group, transformation of a system that is not working. Yeah. and producing incredible violence and uh, misery for everybody. Yeah. You know, the, the one thing I want to mention uh, uh, about fundamentalism on both sides, uh, Hamas, uh, Netanyahu especially, but even before Netanyahu, but Netanyahu especially, really nurtured Hamas because they wanted a split. The Palestinian leadership was always secular, the ones in the West Bank. But before that, they were always secular. And he really nurtured that split. So it's always there, you know, who's the leadership here? Yeah. And uh, they are not my type. And, uh, you know, I believe in secularism and uh, inclus uh, inclusive uh, system. Yeah. And, uh, but Israel really nurtured the, the Hamas deal and allowed money to come in to support them and all of that. So it's, it's not clear how one system developed, it's what's clear is there was helped by Netanyahu and company. Yeah. And Orly, do you have that having, do you have that similar perspective about a secular, and I guess a state um, that of equal citizens, Palestinians, Israelis? You mean for the future? Yeah. Or, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think it would be a great thing if there could be, I think it's the only way forward really. I think it's people are talking about two-state solution. Um, that might have been possible once but it's it's almost impossible now. What and what uh, actually even in the 20s and 30s there were people who envisioned 
one state, two nations, yeah. like a federation. Yeah. By national. Uh, yeah. Basically like, a, like the European federation. You keep your culture, you know, and certain, you know, so local laws, or like the US in a way. You yeah. have your l local laws, but then there's an overall head of the federation, if you like, that looks after things like, I don't know, security and, uh, and whatever. But everybody's nationality or ethnicity or religion is respected and, pe and free movement between, within this federation, between the state of Palestine and state of Israel under yeah. this federation. There would be free movement and people could ba go back and forth and work wherever they want. So there wouldn't be that. And that's really, it's a very small area in the end. You know, yeah. we talk about... Size of Vermont. I mean, yeah. it's, it's so small and, you know, with 10 million people uh, in that area or however many there are. 14. Um, oh, 14 with Gaza. Yeah, I meant with the West Bank. and the, yeah. Right, right, right. Um, it's, you know, yeah. Uh, so I think so. Yeah. Uh, I think that was the be, only hope. That's the only hope, and maybe it'll happen, but it'll probably. I mean, I wish I was as optimistic as Musa. Yeah, I wish. I know. But that's in uh, his uh, personality, and yeah, that's I know. not I mine. Wish you all could be here. So I want to thank you both for joining us. You're most welcome. Thank you, Megan. Orly says, um, comp "What did you say? It's complicated, but it doesn't need to be quite so complicated." It's not. It's really and not. I wish you all could feel the optimism of Musa in particular, because it really is um, commendable. And thank you for joining us. And um, hopefully you've all gotten a little bit out of this. And if you want to learn more about the Burlington Sister City Program or any of the seven different Sister City programs, um, I think there's information on the screen, uh, the website that you can go visit. And, and also, uh, we have a Facebook page. Oh, great, yeah. and Facebook. We should Burlington Bethlehem Arad. Yeah. We have to work on it. <laughs> yeah. And if you know somebody in Arad to make a connection, let's get that going. Okay. Absolutely. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you, Megan. Yeah. Thank you.